potential new storms brewing in the Indian Ocean on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for February 2nd. Around the world today, no active tropical cyclones, although you can still see lurking down near the coast of Antarctica now. The remnants of Cyclone Chiniso still clearly traceable, and a deep extratropical cyclone with a pressure of around 953 millibars and winds of over 60 miles per hour. Into the tropical zones though, it's 119 days until the Atlantic hurricane season begins and there's no areas of interest, which is good news. Now you may be wondering why there's no satellite imagery tonight. Uh, the source that we usually use is currently down. Uh, we did have a second source lined up, although we've not fully integrated it into our new template, so sadly we don't have it. Anyway, in the southern hemisphere, these two areas of interest, that 20% in the eastern part of the Indian Ocean near Australia and a 40% behind it in the more open part of the Indian Ocean. And then right down there you can see ex-cyclone Chiniso which uh, pummeled the uh, Heard Islands and also Isle Amsterdam um, and the Kerguelen Islands, uh, French and Australian territories that were affected by that storm. It was near hurricane strength when it blew through there yesterday, extra tropical. And in the southwest Indian Ocean right now, there is nothing on the radar. It's been a very quiet January, uh, as has been the case in every year of the 2020s so far in terms of landfall threats worldwide. Let's check the satellite imagery and this is the wide shot showing everything around the globe. Look for the red areas, you'll see them in the deep tropics with those disturbances really. Uh, that's where a lot of the rainfall is going on right now and perhaps one or two little areas over Indonesia too. And Australia now that I look at it on that screen. Now let's take a look at the other satellite imagery closer in now to the eastern part of the Indian Ocean. You can see both of those disturbances. In fact, you can see three distinct features. On the left-hand side is that Invest 94S, 40% uh, chance. And then in the middle is that small system there that's rotating decently. It's a small system, doesn't have very much time, 20%. On the right-hand side, that big bank of cloud, which I reckon will probably develop into a tropical cyclone later on, uh, something that we're looking at towards the weekend. Now here's some close-up imagery infrared uh, floater on the potential system near Sri Lanka and southern India. The analyst team still have it as a remnant low with no chances, percentage chances depicted. I just wanted to bring this to our attention though. It is still producing good amounts of convection. Rotation isn't really there uh, and it was moving through northern Sri Lanka there with lots of rainfall. Here's the other system that invests which is looking pretty decent. Hooking round there with some very decent amounts of convection. Well into the minus 80s there in those yellow zones. On the right hand side it's devoid of any convection mainly due to wind shear so it's halfway there. Check sea surface temperatures around the world looking at the eastern pacific first of all look out for temperatures of 79 degrees or higher that's the threshold for tropical cyclone development that's 26 celsius I know we've got both scales depicted here. The Atlantic looking okay in the Caribbean zone but of course we're not expecting anything to form of course being the time of year. And in the Arabian Sea, temperatures looking okay there as well further east, but it's the southwest Indian Ocean that we're more interested in with temperatures there well into the uh, higher 20s, up to around 29 degrees Celsius off the eastern coast of Madagascar in the Mozambique Channel, cooler, a big cool pocket as a result of Chiniso, and down towards the Australian region, temperatures looking good over there. The Bay of Bengal up to around 28 degrees in the deep tropics, further up around 27. Around Australia itself, temperatures really up off the west coast there, pushing 30 degrees Celsius at least, and towards the Gulf of Carpentaria, also 29 to 30, and in the Coral Sea, around 28 to 29. Further east, a few pockets of 29 as well, and quite a lot of uh, good temperatures there near Fiji as well, at least 28 degrees as a general rule. 
Western Pacific has warm sea surface temperatures as far up as the northern Mariana Islands now and almost as far as the northern part of the Philippines there too. The anomalies are a little bit above average in the Western Pacific. Uh, there is still that cool area, the La Nina, still in effect and uh, still holding on but it is on its way out. The southwest Indian Ocean, a significant cool slot there near Madagascar, obviously caused by Chiniso, and a cool slot in the equatorial zone there as well near Indonesia. And in the South Pacific, that warm pool near Fiji could prove to be important later on in the season. Here's the oceanic heat content. Uh, some decent values as far south as uh, New Caledonia, Fiji particularly around the east coast and into the western pacific around guam and south of there it's looking good there as well with decent amounts of energy uh, which has been uh, noted for quite a while now it started the year quite low up there but it has been growing recently let's check what the gfs has in store with the five day forecast first you saw that system moving through sri lanka and down towards the southwest now look at those two other systems down south you see the GFS does develop that eastern system, but not the central one, I stress to say. That one dissipates first, and then it's the eastern one that really develops uh, with some energy coming in from the west and becomes a significant tropical cyclone. Possibly another one over there off northern Australia as well. And then the third system, the one that we're currently tracking 40% on the left-hand side there. So co a complex situation and a lot going on potentially in the next five days. Near Fiji, GFS has a borderline case of maybe a system developing. I wouldn't put much faith into this because earlier runs had this as a strong cyclone. They've downtrended so badly uh, to have it barely as a tropical cyclone here. So uh, I reckon that's not going to happen. But GFS still showing that towards the end of that five day period as it moves through Tonga there. Uh, just a brief spell of it becoming maybe a tropical cyclone. Uh, we've no real place to look at precipitation charts today, but we'll look at the Australian region and near Indonesia. A few of those land areas will get lots of rainfall in the next seven days, but most of the massive accumulations will occur out at sea. We are expecting on some of the easternmost islands of Indonesia, uh, rainfall amounts could end up being around 10 inches or more, that's 250 millimetres. But you'll see with some of those rain amounts at sea, up to 30 inches in that eastern cyclone if it comes to fruition. Uh, if that was over land, that would be quite uh, severe. That is around 750 millimetres of rainfall and 21 inches on that western system there that ends up developing if it does. Uh, that is just over 500 millimetres. But elsewhere, we're not looking at any significant rainfall expectations anytime soon. Sri Lanka is pretty much out of the woods. Into the longer range, and you'll see these two other systems. Uh, that first one, of course, in fact, both of those are the ones we're currently tracking, and you'll see that they both end up not affecting land. The eastern cyclone got quite strong there, significant cyclone, and then that other system, another system forming near Australia towards the end of that 10 day loop. Uh, but that eastern system, uh, that is probably at least a category 3, the western one being a category 1, and then a new system that comes in there much larger off the west coast of Australia delivering tropical storm force winds over a wide area there. That's the important stuff done. You can take a look at the Force 13 merch store and scan the barcode and it will take you straight there. All of our usual items and our full season and individual storm animations on offer. And are still waiting for Hone t-shirt. Still plenty of time to bag your own. Well, in the silly range, more funny goings on, funny business around the Australian region. Two significant cyclones there, little and large. And that western one, that is still at 94S if I'm not mistaken. It's still going towards the 16th day there. A category 3 peak by the looks of things. It gets stronger towards the end actually. So that one goes on for more than half a month if this model is to be believed. The other system, a much larger one, clears Australia by around the 14th or 15th of February and continues out towards the southwest. Maybe another system starting to form right at the end of that loop there, but just to be sure, uh, that is very long range and I wouldn't put much faith into that yet. But you can discuss all of this and more around the wide world of weather on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for uh, tropical and general weather chat. 
Well, what happened on this day? It was February 2nd, 1992, when we had the peak of Cyclone Ekika, a, a real oddball in the Central Pacific that I'm sure Central Pacific fans will be remembering for decades to come. A Category 3 peak on this day, who'd have thought it? Well, there it is on that satellite image. Uh, that particular image was from the Western Pacific Satellite, one of the GMS, I don't know which number, but uh, that was Ekika, the only system that was active on this day in 1992. And looking back to today, the first name on this coming Atlantic hurricane season is Arlene. In the Eastern Pacific, Adrian. And in the Central Pacific, it is still Hone. Five storms so far in 2023 doesn't feel like very much, really. In the Western Pacific, upcoming is Sanvu. In the North Indian Ocean, our next name is Mocha. We are still code blue for uh, Sri Lanka, at least for a little while longer. We'll probably lose that status again uh, by the end of today. And in the Southern Hemisphere, Freddy is next in the Australian region, Dingani in the Southwest Indian Ocean, and it's Judy in the South Pacific. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.